Thank you, Madam Speaker. And my colleague across the way continues to be as slick as, smooth, as used oil on this issue. You, the reality is we have to register every sale, register every firearm, register the person buying, register the, the person who's purchasing, register the PAL number, and the information has to be kept for 20 years. Madam Speaker, that's wow. a registry. The uh, second issue that I, I just wanted to bring up and point out is he keeps talking about the extensive consultation they've done. That's actually not true. The uh, Assembly of First Nations has said, first of all, they weren't consulted. Secondly, this legislation violates their treaty rights. And thirdly, they'll see this government in court. As well, the opposition from the Yukon has, has said in their briefing, unlike the provinces, Yukon only has one member of parliament. This leads to situations where the input of northerners is often an afterthought not taken into account. This is the case with this piece of firearms legislation. Yukon Fire, uh, Fish and Game Association says the same thing. They can't, they can't get through to their member of parliament. He won't represent them, and they haven't had an opportunity to speak to the government about this. So why doesn't he just admit that they have failed Canadians completely on this? You failed to consult, but they don't actually really care. The Honourable Minister of Public Safety. Madam Speaker, I cannot possibly admit that because it's false. Here you go. In fact, um, the, uh, the question of the consultation uh, that was uh, uh, gone through prior to, uh, to the legislation, before our platform was put together, during the course of the election, after the election, in the preparation of the legislation and so forth, uh, that, uh, that information was requested some weeks ago. Uh, in an order paper question, that uh, question has been answered, uh, and all of the details of the consultation uh, is now on the public record uh, in the uh, response to the order paper question. Uh, in addition to that, I would underscore the fact that uh, the content of Bill C-71 uh, was uh, embodied in specific promises in our election campaign. Uh, those uh, promises were thoroughly debated over the course of the longest election campaign in Canadian history. Uh, and in fact, Canadians had an opportunity to vote on the content, and the result of that vote was clear. Thirdly, Madam Speaker, uh, there were two further key challenge, uh, channels for consultation. One was the Canadian Firearms Advisory Committee uh, that, uh, that examined uh, the, uh, the content of what would become Bill C-71. Uh, and I would also note that a few uh, months ago, we convened here in Ottawa a National Guns and Gangs Summit. Uh, that uh, dealt with a number of issues, including uh, firearms. Uh, it was well attended, <clears throat> including by members of the opposition uh, and almost uh, all of the major organizations that deal with firearms. Uh, and we had a very good discussion in the course of that summit meeting. So, Madam Speaker, there were indeed uh, extensive consultations. Here, here. Speaker, there's so many things to challenge in that. I don't know how short we can be, but uh, there's a requirement here, Mr. Speaker, to register every sale, register every firearm, register the person buying, register the seller, register the PAL number, and keep the information for 20 years. So I don't know how these guys can pretend that this isn't a registry, but I want to ask them something specific about that. Section 102 of the Firearms Act allows for a firearms officer to review, seize, or copy any records kept as a requirement of a business license without a warrant. And under this bill, they're required to keep those records. So I'm just wondering if he can tell us how uh, that he squares that circle where it's already in the in the legislation, previous legislation, firearms officers can demand that information without a warrant and they're claiming that they're going to need a warrant to go into businesses to get the information that basically forms a new registry. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Now, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, you can imagine a circumstance today where there is no requirement for a store to keep a record of who they sold a firearm to. There's no requirement. This bill changes that. And I think that makes good sense because most stores, I would say the vast, vast majority, do keep records. But if you're a criminal and you're thinking of buying a gun to commit a crime, are you going to go to a store that keeps records? Or are you going to go to a store that keeps no records? And by the way, when you are committing domestic violence, when you have no connections to gangs, you go and... Kurt. and killed with legally acquired firearms where they had a history of violence. And by the way, her name is Lindsay Irons. She was in my riding and she was shot and killed. These situations are real and our need to protect women in this country is real. And this bill does important public safety good and it deserves an honest and real debate. Hopefully to give some other people a chance, but two, two things that I want to ask my colleague. Uh, when you come to buy a firearm under this new legislation, you will have to register the sale. You have to register the firearm itself. You have to register the person who is buying needs to register, the 
gun uh, shop that is selling needs to register as part of the transaction. The PAL number needs to be registered, and then the information needs to be kept for 20 years. So, I just the first question is, doesn't he see that that is that is the establishment of a registry? The second part of my question has to do with. Uh, the fact that the Liberals are saying this information will not be available without a warrant to anyone, except already, Mr. Speaker, Section 102 of the Firearms Act allows a firearms officer to review, seize, or copy any records kept as a requirement of a business license without a warrant. And I'm just going to ask my, my colleague if, he's, if he has some concerns about the fact that one part of the Act says they don't need a warrant, and yet the Liberals are, are, are leading, misleading, I think, Canadians into believing that this information that's being held in gun stores is going to be private unless there's a warrant involved in, in, the, uh, in, in accessing that information. The Honourable Member for Flamborough Glanbrook. Thank you, Speaker. Of course, I have a, a profound amount of uh, concern in regards to everything that the member said. Uh, but, you know, not the least of which is this is simply another layer of red tape that's going to be another cost to taxpayers and information that's already available that I've already mentioned and the parliamentary secretary agreed with that retailers already now make sure that every sale uh, is recorded in their own store, that a, a law enforcement officer can go in those stores and check that. But this simply is, a, is another way to add red tape and make it more difficult for the average Canadian to be able to comply with these laws. Speaker, I'd also like to say that the other thing that this bill doesn't address is, are victims of violent crime. And victims have been total, the victim concern from, from the Liberal Party has been totally absent in this session. In fact, the victim ombudsman's office has been vacant for months, and they even, even had the courtesy to make sure that there's a victim ombudsperson there to uh, be able to deal with the concerns of families who have been victimized in Canada. Mr. Speaker, and uh, I just find it interesting that uh, we've got a Bill C-71 here. We've got a, we've got a good gun, uh, if you want to call it, firearms registry in this country. Uh, people who want to participate in, in firearms activities uh, have to be licensed and get the proper certification. This bill just adds more bureaucracy. It's a, more of a process. There's more difficulty for legitimate people to actually be involved in, the, in these kinds of hobbies. I'd like to have my, my colleague just comment on the difference between this bill, the attitude of this government in C-71, and uh, the fact that they're clamping down on legitimate, uh, honest people across this country, and C-75, where they're reducing the sentences for things like terrorism, genocide, um, uh, criminal activity, organized municipal corruption, those kinds of things. Could you reflect on that a bit? The Honourable Member for Simcoe Gray. Well, I, uh, I want to thank my, uh, my colleague for his question and his outstanding work in this House, especially on these issues that involve public safety. Uh, like him, I find it shockingly surprising, actually within the same week, that we're talking about two bills that deal with public safety concerns, and the Liberals seem to be on both sides of the, the answer to this question. What is it? Is it that we actually are here to make sure that Canadians are safe? Or is it that we want to have such an open, liberal access to things that we put Canadians at risk? I don't think this government knows, and that's why we actually see these pieces of legislation that are not clear to Canadians about making sure that they are safe on Canadian soil.